AC3, thanks so much for joining us today. Here we are, in fact, right behind our physical campus in Canal Winchester. I figured it's fall, it's beautiful, cornfields, let's just get outside. And so uh, here we are. I wanna say before we jump into the message today that we're about to celebrate our one year uncharted anniversary. And this was really our generosity initiative that many people have given to and gave. And because of it, we're in, we're in a good position as a church. Uh, because of that, we're able to continue to give to our community. And so through that, I just wanna say a huge thank you. But also coming up on this one year anniversary is a couple things. Uh, I know many of you have made commitments. Several are new to the church and have not. And so we're gonna have a re-up of commitment for Uncharted. And so uh, actually there's an Uncharted card. You can get it online at myc3church.com slash Uncharted. And on here is really, you know, you say about my Uncharted commitment. For those of you that have already, have already committed, we're gonna ask you to re-up. Uh, and we're gonna count all those again. We wanna celebrate what God is doing as we move forward for the vision. And so, but if it's your first time, because we've had several new people jump into our church and go, I wanna be a part. Uh, on the top of this card, right, this is my first, our first commitment over the next 12 months. So this isn't monthly, but this is the yearly total of what you believe God's gonna have you give. Now, this is your tithes, offerings. Maybe you wanna give over and above that. Whatever it may be, all of this is a one fund so everything goes into one fund from which we do all of this ministry. And so right there is uncharted for the first time givers. Secondly, we have those if you've already committed. And maybe you go, man, my commitment was this. You can put that in there. If you go, I'm gonna, I wanna confirm that my commitment finished strong. We also have some that may go, hey, I wanna increase my commitment. So I would say if that is you, you put the total of what you had already committed added to what you plan on giving. So that is a total of this next year, what you believe God's going to have you give. And then of course, thirdly, for those that COVID has greatly infected, we completely understand this gives you an opportunity well to put here, hey, this is going to be my new commitment as of my financial picture has changed. And so regardless, we are moving forward as a church uh, that all of Columbus would know Jesus. And again, I want to say a huge thank you for your giving. And so got a couple big days coming up. I know uh, November 1st, we're having really our, our, our celebrating our 14 years as a church, but we're also gonna be uh, Commitment Sunday will be November 1st, where we're gonna hand in our commitment cards and go, man, we're all in, let's go, let's win the city of Columbus and beyond. And then secondly, De no, or December 6th will be our big give. So that is where we will begin giving um, for those of you just jumping in to the uncharted. And so we're incredibly excited about this next future, uh, this next year, as God continues to lead us on in the future. So with that, let's jump into our message today. We're, we're in this message series called Unstoppable. And so again, celebrating a year. I know, man, these, these past couple weeks and, and even next week, uh, we're giving away thousands of pounds of food because of your generosity. It is the church on mission. That's who we are. And so today I wanna jump into the message. I know last week we talked Moses. We're gonna continue down this path with Moses. Uh, we talked unstoppable mission. This week talking unstoppable faith. Now, we use faith all the time, whether we believe it or not, whether we realize it or not. We have faith all the time. Let me ask you this. Has any of you ever went first at something? You're the first one to go. Um, maybe you had to trust something or someone. I remember a time I was a little more foolish than I am now, uh, 18 years old, me and a buddy, we're on the Ohio River, there's a huge bridge, and we look over, we're like, bro, that would be awesome. And I'm like, ah, I don't know if you live from that or not. And we're like, so we're rationalizing in our head. We're like, well, I know big boats go into there. So that has to be like 20 plus feet deep. And when his kids ride by on his bike, as teenager, we're like, hey bro, you ever seen anyone jump off this bridge and live? And he's like, yeah, I saw a guy jump off of it. Did he live? He said, yeah. We're like, well, there you go. So now what am I doing? I'm literally taking this kid's word and I'm putting my trust and hope in that it's at least 20 feet deep. So me and my buddy were like, all right, who's gonna go first? And I'm like, well, you're crazier. He's like, yeah, but you're closer to God. You're gonna be a pastor, right? I'm like, well, so here's what we do. Literally, we pray, Lord, we know this is stupid, but I pray that you protect us, amen. Now, I'm not encouraging anyone to do this. Don't do this at home, people. I get up there, I'm like, whoo, whoo, whoo. Full trust or stupidity, I'm not sure. I jump off this bridge. Ah! Ah, when it's a two breath screamer on the way down, you know it's, it's bad. I remember hitting the water, boom, I was wearing kind of the Velcro round sandals. 
man, I remember hitting the, the, my feet hit so hard, I bruised the bottom of my feet. I remember holding my nose like this and I about busted my nose. And I just remember going down, down underwater, down. I, I remember putting my hands out to slow down, 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 thinking, oh Lord, am I ever gonna get to the top? And here I am holding my breath, trying to get to the top. It seemed like forever. I come out of the water. <sighs> That was awesome! Okay, then my buddy jumped crazy. Here's the truth though. Took a lot of stupidity or it took a lot of faith. I was actually putting my faith in how deep that was, not realizing the consequences at that age. Um, putting my faith in what this teenage kid who i never met said, okay? But think about our lives. Some of the greatest moments of our lives are on the, on the other side of, of things of faith. Uh, it's maybe we did something afraid. We were unsure. We didn't have control. We, the truth is this, the fruit is out on the limb. And so, you know, when we come to Christ, we're this new creation in Jesus. And so we then begin to walk this life of faith. And so today I want to talk about this because the miracles that most never see are in this land of faith. So today I want to take you to, to, uh, to Moses, and we're going to look at his life. Because here's what I believe. For most believers of Jesus, we live very mundane, very faithless life. In fact, let me ask you, when was the last time you took a bold step of faith? When is the last time you did something uncomfortable? When is the last time that maybe you were generous to the point that it stretched you? When was the last time you stepped out to show Christ's love? So today I want to talk about unstoppable faith and how different would our lives be if we lived a life of faith i want to take you to moses we see this moses again we talked last week moses this burning bush god speaks to him he's boom on mission and he's on this mission to set the israelites free million plus people who were under the slavery and the bondage of the egyptians they were god's people they had turned away god took his hand off of them they were enslaved and they cried out to god god heard them send moses to help redeem them. And we see this. Moses then takes this bold step of faith and goes before the most powerful man on the planet, Pharaoh. And he says, the God says, let my people go. In fact, we see this in verse one, two of chapter five. Um, Moses goes, talks to the Israelite leaders who were enslaved. He said, here's what God's gonna do. They're excited at first. And then he says, afterward, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, this is what the Lord God of Israel says, let my people go so they may go and worship me, right? They may hold a festival in the desert. And Pharaoh said, who is this? Who is the Lord that I should obey him, that I should let Israel go? I do not know the Lord and I will not let Israel go. Has this ever happened to somebody else where maybe you, you feel God speaking to you or maybe you've read something you're like, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go this way. I know this is what God wants. You start walking down this path and then it doesn't get easier. It gets harder. Or maybe things don't work out the way we want. What do we do then, right? So have you ever, have you ever had your faith tested? That's a big deal. Now, so we see this, their faith is tested. Now God, we realize later, we can see God's plan now that I can read to the end of this book of Exodus, that God was flexing his power, not only to the Israelites, his people, not only to the Egyptians, but to the world, that there would never be a doubt who set them free from the hand of Pharaoh. He sends all these plagues, I mean crazy plagues. All the water turns to blood, flies everywhere, frogs everywhere, like you know, gnats, locusts, every green thing gone, hail from the sky. The last one being the firstborn of every Egyptian dies. I mean, this is huge. And finally, we see this in Exodus chapter 12. You know, the Pharaoh's like, get out. He's like, get out of here. And he says, you know, leave. He says, get out, take your flocks, your herds, you know, get out of here. <clears throat> and so they do, they leave. God sets them free, these people. Now, here's what I believe. Many of us never step in the land of faith. Now, the faith that Moses stepped out in is why God moved. You know, God chooses us. He chooses us to move through us. Here's what faith is. Faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. So Moses went in with complete faith. Things didn't work out at first, but he kept strong and then God moved. It's, it's complete faith. Think about it. every day of your life, every day of my life, we, we walk out in faith. When you sit down in that chair every day, what have you done? You put your faith in that chair, right? Here's what faith is. In fact, if you get one thing today, understand this. Faith is trust in action. That's what it is. 
Faith is trust in action. It's us stepping, taking steps of faith to believe what God has called us. And so as a church, we want to be a church that moves in in faith. And so let me ask you this. What about for you? What about in your life? What, what, things, what steps of faith have you taken recently? Um, and what does faith in action look like? Let me give you a couple thoughts. Here's one. Faith goes first. It goes first. That's what it does. With Moses, right, um, God did the powerful acts after Moses took a step of faith. And so let me ask you, you know, do you trust God enough? Maybe for some of us, you mean, I've trust God enough to do this, to move this. You know, with our, with our giving, even with tithing, or maybe even with this, hey, giving to uncharted, it takes steps of faith. Today, I want to take you and kind of show you a testimony video of a gentleman in our church, actually a good friend of mine, as he talks about how God nudged him to take a step of faith. Check it out. When I first came to C3, um, I was kind of in a law, I guess is a good word to use, whereas even though I was going to church and I was very heavy into worship and, and being active in the church, there was always that point in life kind of where I fell alone. And it's like I had no one to talk to. And when I came to C3, I met Clayton Warren, who was head of Overwatch. And when I met Clayton and got involved in his uh, family group, it, that was a big help to me because we developed a friendship. And through that friendship, he became a person I could call and talk to. Because of conversations I've had with other people here at C3 that have uplifted me, it has allowed me to help uplift other people. And that's a, that's a great feeling to have. And that's what Uncharted is all about. It's all about stepping out on faith. You know, we moved into the new church and we had our parking lot project going on. And we were trying to, you know, figure out how we can do these things and, you know, and give to the church. And so I had volunteered since our family had a construction business. I said, well, I'll take care of the paving part of it. Then after we kind of got into it, it got a little bit more consuming than I initially thought. I'm going, oh boy, I don't know how we're going to get this done. You know, I have, I have a trucking business that I was doing, and so I was running my truck, and that was basically my source of income. That was my source of income. And I'm like, man, I says, I really need to take some time off work to get this done. I says, I want to do this. You know, I, I want to help the church out. I said, but man, I says, that means I got to literally stop working which means there's no money coming in. So it's like, got bills to pay, all these different things going on. And it's just, God was speaking to me and says, I got you. He says, I'll take care of it, I got you. And after we got all done and everything, you know, I went back to doing what I was doing and back to trucking and all that fun stuff. <laughs> and Bill Fitzpatrick, who also goes, goes to T3, he called me, he goes, hey, he says, my boss want to talk to you. I'm like, oh, really? He goes, yeah. He says, I don't know exactly about what, but he says he wants to talk to you. So I said, okay, well, I'll call him, make an appointment to talk to him. Didn't really know what's going on. And a couple weeks went by and Bill came back to me again. He goes, hey, my boss is still waiting to talk to you. I'm like, okay, I promise you, I'll give him a call this week. So I talked to him and they says, hey, can we set up an interview with you? I'm like, okay. He says, we just want to talk to you about possibly working for us. I'm going, well, I kind of have my own business. He goes, yeah, we know. And that's why we want to talk to you. So long story short, I go in and I sit down and talk to him. They says, hey, we want to hire you as our operations manager for our company. I'm going, wow. Says, okay, so I go in and I listen, see what they, you know, had to say and everything, what they wanted to offer. And they says, well, here's what we're going to offer you. And he slid a piece of paper in front of me and I looked at it and my eyes went, whoa, that's more than I'm making now. <laughs> so, long well, story short, I says, okay, yeah, I'll come to work for you. And that just shows how God's work. By me saying, you know what, I'm going to take three weeks off from what I would normally do. You know, I'm not going to worry about bills. I'm not going to worry about what's got to be paid. I'm just going to do what God has asked me to do. And in return, he gave me more than I had at first. When God says, hey, I want you to do this, 
do it. Don't doubt it. Because even though you may not think it'll work, but he's already got a plan before before he even asks you to do something. He already knows what the answer is going to be. So, only thing I can say is, when God asks you to do something, do it. Appreciate my friend Dredd really bringing that, uh, really how God nudged him and moved him into that. You know, the truth is this, right? Faith goes first. And faith is what sets things into motion. We see in Hebrews 11, right? It's kind of like the hall of fame for faith. And in Hebrews 11, 7, it talks about Noah. Noah builds this huge boat before the rains come. Wow, faith set things into motion. We see in Hebrews 11:8 8, where Abraham, God says, sell everything you own and pack it up and go to a place that I will show you. Where are we going? Don't worry about it. I'll tell you when we get there. Okay, talk about faith. That's what he does. It sets things in motion. Faith goes first. I remember at C3 Church 14 years ago. It was like, wow, God had led us. I remember quitting my job. And as soon as I did, things began to fall into place. Where's our church going to be? I don't know. East Columbus. Literally three days later, a building opens up. Faith sets things into motion. And faith goes first. Right? Another thing, though, that faith does. Faith perseveres. Perseveres. Uh, Moses. Let's go back to that story. Moses says, let my people go. Not only did Pharaoh say no, Pharaoh said, you know what? I'm going to make it worse. And he says, no more giving straw to the Israelite slaves. They got to find their own straw and they have to continue making the same quota of bricks. Literally, the taskmasters are beating the leaders of the Israelites going, produce more. You're lazy. And they're like, they're like Moses. Now the people are angry with Moses. Huh? What does Moses have to do? Persevere. What do the people have to do? Persevere. Now, let's be honest. Have you ever stepped out in faith and things got worse? Have you ever tried to do the right thing and things don't seem like they're going well? What does faith do, though? It perseveres. I love what, uh, here's the truth. Circumstances, right, will reveal the maturity of your faith. Um, in other words, how far does our trust go in God? Like, how far? Like, how much will we trust Him? You know, the scripture says in Isaiah 55, 9, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Let me ask you this. Have, have you ever given up? Maybe when things don't go as planned. Maybe you, your spouse walks out on you. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe a, a loss of a loved one. Very difficult times. Maybe financial stress. Like faith though, what does it do? It perseveres. Faith perseveres. We see in Philippians 4, I love, I love the scripture. Philippians 4, uh, I think 4.11, um, the Bible says this. It says, I am... I am not saying this because I'm in need. And here's the point. He says, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Now, what's he saying? Wow, regardless of circumstances, like, you know, independent of circumstances. Can you imagine living a life of faith regardless of circumstances? Like, it doesn't matter what happens around me. My faith will persevere. This is what the scripture is teaching us here. Let me ask you, does your faith persevere? Moses had to persevere with trust in action. Faith persevere. It's keeping on, keeping on. And finally, let me give you one more. Uh, faith goes first, faith perseveres, but also faith in action enables miracles. Now look at Moses. Like Moses, faith, man, powerful, unstoppable because he persevered, he moved on. And because of it, it enabled God to do miracles. You know, here's what I love. Like we can't do the supernatural on our own, right? But God chooses to use us to bring it about. We need him. And he needs us. He chooses to use us. We can't do it without him. And God chooses to use us. And so let me ask you this. I think this, uh, where are you at in your faith? Because this whole relationship with Jesus, we come to him, it's all about faith. It's all about us learning to take steps of faith to be more like him. And so it's faith in action. Faith is like that muscle, right? It's the more we use it, the bigger that it becomes, the stronger we become. You know, and hear me, there is a difference between faith and mental assent. I know in our deep end study, we're really looking at this. Mental ascent is I read the Bible, but it never changes me. I read the Bible, but I never put it to action. We can memorize it. We can learn it. We can know everything about it. But until we put it to action, that's where the power is. Faith, right? Faith. I love what the Bible says in James 1.22. It says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. 
do what it says. I mean, that's simple. Really, faith enables miracles. Faith in action. You know, it's, it's almost like this, right? It's like, have you ever walked in a, in a room that has the, the motion sensor light switch? It's completely dark in the room, and all of a sudden you walk in, and boom, the lights come on. You're like, whoa, all right. You walk out, the lights go off. Here's the truth. The power was always in the room. The power was in the room and available, but it took motion to put it into play. It's the same way with our faith. God is all powerful. He's full of power. He desires to use for his glory. He desires to to work through us. And his power is turned on in our life when we take steps of faith and put it to action. So let me ask you this. Are you living out this faith? Are you living this out, you know, with God's power? The greater our faith in him, here's what happens, the more he can entrust to us and the greater the impact for the kingdom of God. And so hear me, faith is trust in action. Faith is trust in action. So what do we do? Here's what I would encourage you today. Take a step. What's that step look like for you? Well, it could be taking a step in your generosity. It could be reaching out to someone who is in need and you show the love of Christ today. Um, You know, it could be praying for someone who needs healing. I don't know. Take a bold step of faith. Moses did and God showed his power. We read all through the scripture where men and women took bold steps of faith and it became unstoppable because our faith combined right with God's power is what moves. We put the word to practice. And so hear me today. What step of faith will you take this week to go, Lord, I put my trust in you. Why? Because faith is trust in action. And so today I wanna pray. Maybe there's some here today and you go, Conan, I don't know Jesus. I wanna pray for you today. Man, and, and by your confession, by your really saying, Lord, forgive me, wash me clean, make me new. I believe you're the son of God. You can come into relationship with almighty God through Jesus Christ. And so if you've never prayed that, if you've never crossed the line of faith, or maybe you've walked away, it's been years, and you wanna renew your commitment with Jesus, I'm gonna ask you just to bow your heads right where you are and pray this with me. Just ask him, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for dying for my sin. Forgive me. Wash me clean and make me new. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. And today I commit my life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And finally, before uh, we close our time today, I just want to speak a blessing over you. Again, many times in the scripture of the Old Old Testament, the priest would speak a blessing over the people if you allow me to do that today. All right, now I, I do. I speak a blessing over you in Jesus' name. That God's favor that God's mercy, that God's grace will be seen and experienced in your life, that this week you will walk in a greater level of peace than you've ever known, that Christ's love will flow through you as you take bold steps of faith. May God prompt you this week to take a step of faith, and as you do, may he meet you exactly where you are with his supernatural power. May you realize this week that you are supernatural agents of the power of Christ's love. May you walk in the fullness of it. May you, walk, may you walk in his blessing and may you walk in his favor this week in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. If you were encouraged by today's message and want to stay connected throughout the week, download our app and follow us on social media. Also, before we close out service today, we wanted to take a minute and celebrate last week's free grocery drive through with you guys. Take a look at this. Isn't that awesome? We handed out over a thousand boxes of food to our community. Be sure to join us next Sunday, October 25th, as we have our next free grocery drive-through happening from 1.30 to 3.30 at our Canal Winchester campus. 
Hope you guys have an incredible week and we will see you next week.